911 Talk Podcast, Episode 74, for Monday, March 5th, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Pilot Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. If you're a regular reader of my blogs or a listener of my podcasts, you're probably involved in public safety in some way, or you manage E911 in your company's PBX infrastructure. You're also more than likely to understand that caller ID is used for routing E911 calls to the proper peace app, and all that magic happens based on some information listed in the MSAG database or Master Street Address Guide. In many ways, MSAG is at the heart of the E911 system today, at least from a routing perspective. Now, with the adoption of next generation 911, we've said many times that telephone numbers and the locations they represent, Annie and Alley, can finally go away. So with the demise of Annie and Alley, since the MSAG is fed from that data, it in itself is also on a very short leash. At a bare minimum, it'll need to be replaced to realize the full benefit of next generation 911 and routing based on IP location objects and the geodetic data that they'll contain. In the next gen 911 architecture, and even in some of today's local dispatch systems, is something called GIS. GIS, or Geographical Information System, is a system of hardware and software that's used for the storage, retrieval, mapping, and analysis of geographic data. Specific spatial features are stored in a coordinate database that includes latitude and longitude, which reference a particular place on the Earth. Now associated to this point-specific spatial data are associated attributes that can be layered together for mapping and analysis. GIS is nothing new. It's been used for scientific investigations, resource management, and development planning for years. And in the next generation 911 world, it provides the new routing database that is queried and provides location and emergency service correlation. Now, that's just a short description, and there is much more to GIS than just that. And it certainly doesn't do all this on its own. But it is the primary source for location and routing instructions. So if GIS is not correct, then we're routing in the dark. And for a 911 center, that could be disastrous. I recently stopped by the 911 center that had just upgraded their computer-aided dispatch or CAD application. Now, one of the first things that I noticed was that many long winding driveways in this rural area were noted as unnamed roads in the GIS database. Additionally, some short roads such as neighborhood cul-de-sacs were also listed as driveways. Now, being familiar with the area, I recognize these immediately as long driveways to residences or farms. This is a huge issue for public safety. And the reason why so many resources need to be dedicated specifically to GIS. When a call arrives at the 911 center, whether it's landline or wireless based, the GIS is queried for the reference to that particular place on the earth. Now, that spatial data fundamentally is comprised of points, lines and arcs, as well as polygons and define what are known as boundaries. From an emergency services perspective, these emergency 911 service zone boundaries all have unique combination of police, fire, and ambulance jurisdiction, for one. From the dispatcher's perspective, a single police department may patrol an entire town. However, EMS and fire companies may have more specific jurisdictions that they're responsible for. Specific detail about an area can be overlaid on the base spatial data that indicate specific pieces of information. Some of the more common layers include buildings, school zones, as well as primary service areas for a particular agency or department. A next generation 911 computer aided dispatch system relies on this information to make run recs or dispatch recommendations to the dispatcher. So if GIS is not correct and roads are missing or mislabeled, the entire process of dispatching could be placed in jeopardy. Without a properly maintained GIS database, public safety would be operating in the dark. And when we look at why it costs so much to maintain the emergency services network, just the resources and manpower alone required for GIS can be staggering without the right solution. Now, am I an expert on GIS? No, not by a long shot, but I'm smart enough to know that without a proper GIS solution, and by proper I mean the one that's accurate with current information, next generation 911 and all the information it promises to provide would become worthless. For those of you in public safety 
you already understand exactly how important GIS data is to your day-to-day -day job. For those of you not directly in public safety, I hope I've educated you just a little bit to something that's really important and expanded your horizon. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911.